All right, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be making dark pneumorphic UI elements. So pneumorphic design is kind of like a really minimalist way of approaching user interface design. Essentially what you do is kind of take the screen itself and try to make design elements that look like they're popping off the screen, but in a very subtle way by using drop shadows and interglows and a bunch of different stuff that we'll get into in this video. As always, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like below for the YouTube algorithm, that would be a big help as well as a comment, uh, I would really appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, subscribe if you're interested in more content like this. So let's get into the video. All right, so you can see pretty much this is what we're gonna be building, but I'll start from scratch for this. So all you do to start a new document is just hit Command N. You can really do whatever size artboard you'd like, but for this I'm gonna do 1920 by 1080 because it's pretty standard size. We'll zoom out so we can see the whole thing easily. And what we're gonna do is just so I have this as a reference is copy it and paste it into here. So that way I can uh, reference it if I need to. So the first thing we're gonna do is just draw a background right over the whole artboard. Uh, that way we got kind of something to work off of. We're gonna get rid of the stroke and add a gradient. So then we have to edit the gradient a little bit. Obviously we don't want it to be just black and white. So we'll select this little guy down here and double click on the fill. And obviously since it's a dark UI, we're gonna go on the dark end of things you never want to go totally black with dark UI elements. It looks kind of like amateur, uh, a little bit too contrasty, never really ends up looking realistic. So you just want to come out a little bit off the black line. But definitely want it to be a little bit saturated, so maybe like right around there. And then we'll switch the other one too to look a little bit of a lighter one. So maybe uh, right around there. Looks pretty good. You can see it's a little bit different than the last one I did, but that's okay. Um, so now we'll do 45 degrees for this angle. Give it a little bit of an angle, always kind of makes it look nice. Okay, cool. And now that we have our background drawn, what we're going to do is lock it in place so that we can't bump it later on. So to do that quickly, you just hit Command 2. And if you ever need to unlock it and edit it, you can hit Command Option 2, which will unlock everything. But obviously we want it locked so we don't bump anything. Then what we'll do is just drag a quick square on the artboard, try to center it up a little bit. And we don't want a gradient for this one, so we will just go to a regular fill. Probably going to have to mess with that a little bit. I think we want it to be a little bit darker. Maybe right around here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then what we're going to want to do is round the corners. Since UI elements are super soft, they look a lot better when they have rounded corners. Kind of just makes it look a little bit softer. Okay, cool. So now we'll copy two of these because we're going to be adding different effects to each one of them. So just go ahead and drag these off to the side. Then what we're going to want to do with this first one is just add a regular old drop shadow. So we'll come over here to our effects panel. If you don't have that over here, you can just come up to the effects tab at the top. But I have it over here, so I'm going to use it from here. We'll just hit stylize and drop shadow. So the first one that we're going to do is just uh, 15 degree X and Y offset. And the color is going to be, uh, this is going to be kind of like our main shadow. So we're going to go all the way to black on this one. Make sure you have your preview checked so you can kind of see what you're doing. And I would up the opacity on this one to, I mean, it kind of depends on where you want it, but I like the, the dark shadow, especially on dark UI elements, to be pretty dark. So I'm going to go with a 75% opacity and about a 40 pixel blur. Hit OK on that. And you can see it's already kind of starting to pop off the screen a little bit, but this next one's really going really gonna to make it stand out. So we'll drag over one of our other uh, squares that we made before. Then we'll select it, head back over to our effects panel, stylize, and this one we're going to add another drop shadow, but in the opposite direction. So we'll do a negative 15 pixel for the X and Y offset, and that looks pretty good. And then we're going to obviously want to change this to a lighter color. Again, try to avoid uh, pure whites or pure blacks, unless it's the first drop shadow that we added. Uh, otherwise, it's going to look kind of unrealistic okay and obviously the opacity on that's way too high oh also you want to make sure that your blend mode is on normal otherwise these are some kind of funky options you definitely want to make sure it's normal and we're going to end up lowering our opacity pretty far probably around 15 percent 20 percent so let's see how that looks select off of it nope looks pretty good i think around 20 percent is where i'm going to go for this i think on the last one i did 15 but that's okay so then for this last one, what we're going to do is actually add an inner glow. So again, we'll just make sure we center this right over top of the last one. Head over to our effects panel again, 
Uh, again, you can select it up here if you'd like, but for this, we're going to come over here and select inner glow. And this one, we want to have a pretty big blur on it so that it is super soft, uh, easy transition. Probably going to go all the way up to 100 on this, actually. And then we do want to pull it a little bit off black, not too far, because we do want it to be dark. And maybe we'll go down a little bit on the opacity, maybe down to like 55%. See how that looks once we select off of it. I think that might be a little bit too much. So if you want to edit that, you can come back over to your effects panel and just hit inner glow. Let's bring the opacity down another 10% and see how that looks. And I think I might even go down another 10%. Wow. Maybe 5. Let's stick with 5%. Okay. That looks pretty good. So that's kind of like your base button. What you can do to make it pop off the screen a little bit more is actually add a bit of a stroke. Uh, this will kind of like give a little bit more shape to the button, make it stand out from the screen. So we'll, we'll select stroke and come up maybe to about here for the, uh, for the outside stroke color. You don't want it to be too light, otherwise it's going to start losing its new morphism. You just want it to be kind of like a gentle, gentle stroke. And then you obviously want this to be thicker because this is a pretty big object. Maybe we'll go up to, even go up to 20. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to create our actual uh, power button symbol. So, so to do that, we're going to hit L to quickly bring up the ellipse tool. If you don't feel like doing that, you can click over in your shapes panel. Uh, and then what you'll do is hold shift and drag, which will create an ellipse for you. It doesn't really matter what size for now. We can resize it later. Then for the fill, we're going to get rid of the fill totally. So to do that quickly, you can hit backslash. Oops, I did that to the stroke. So we'll go back to fill. Select fill and just hit backslash. Now what we'll do is draw a little line across here to make sure that we cut the uh, cut the circle in the same spot. And then we'll hit C to quickly bring up our cut tool. And cut here and here. And then it doesn't look like it cut our circle. So then you might have to select your circle if you drew the line on top. That'll give you the cut you want. Uh, it'll make sure it's even. So then what we'll do is select the uh, circle and hit the stroke panel over here. If you don't have stroke up here, you can search in the help and look for stroke. And then we'll round the caps off. So again, it kind of follows that soft pneumorphic look. And then we're definitely going to want to up the stroke on this because uh, we want it to be kind of standing out. So let's go all the way up to 80 points. And then you're just going to draw another line right in the center of this from the, the approximately the midpoint of the circle. That looks a little bit too long, so we're going to shrink it up by hitting V and just dragging it right down. Bringing it up a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. And then we're going to want to lighten up the stroke a little bit. So it kind of pops off the button. This is kind of like the highlight element of the button, so we want it to stand out. Maybe right around here. We're probably going to end up playing with it once we actually drag it onto the shape. So we're just going to, before we drag this on, actually select all this and lock this so we can't bump that either. So to do that quickly, again, you just hit Command 2. And then we're going to drag this down so it looks like it's approximately the shape that's going to need to go inside. That's pretty good. And then just try to center it within there. And obviously the stroke is way too big now, so we're going to go probably back down to maybe, uh, maybe around 60. That's pretty good. I think I want to make this a little bit smaller. All this is kind of a game of just going back and forth and playing with it. Um, okay, that looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is actually add an inner glow to this as well. So again, we'll go over to our effects panel, hit stylize, and then inner glow. Okay, obviously that uh, blur is way too much, so we're going to bring the blur down to pretty far. Probably going to end up making the blur maybe like only a 20 pixel blur. This is a pretty small stroke, so it doesn't have to be too much. Maybe we'll up the opacity a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. Nice, and then again we'll just select this. And we're going to actually add an outer glow now as well to make that button kind of glow. So we'll head over to Stylize, select Outer Glow, and that is way too bright. So we're going to go pretty far down with that, probably to around maybe 20%, uh, let's try 18%, 
looks pretty good. So that looks pretty good, but I think what I actually want to do is adjust the second drop shadow so that it's a little bit more bright and kind of pops off the screen. The element's pretty dark right now. I know we're going for a dark UI, but I think this is just a little bit too dark, not enough contrast. So to unlock stuff, we'll again just hit Command Option 2, and that'll unlock everything in the artboard. And then what we'll do is just drag this first one with the inner glow on it out of the way so we can select this this one with the uh, the lighter drop shadow on it. We'll bring up the drop shadow. And we're going to up the opacity how about 5%. We'll see how that looks. Cool. Yeah, I think 25% was the right move for that. And again, I think I'm going to lock these back ones and actually brighten up that uh, front power button too now that we brightened up that back one. So we'll select these, we'll open up our appearance panel, we'll click on the outer glow, and then we're going to up it. Mm, why don't we try 25%, see how that looks. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I think what I'm actually going to do is, again, lighten up this stroke a little bit, so we get a little more contrast in there, maybe around there. Okay, I think that was the final touch that we kind of needed on this. A lot of uh, new morphic design is really, really subtle, and you got to kind of just like play with it and see, you know, what's going to work for your particular situation. Obviously, if you follow along with these exact text codes, it's going to work out for you, but uh, if you're making your own custom designs, it's just like a lot of playing, a lot of back and forth, um, adjusting things, little subtle things. But once you kind of figure out the look that you're going for, it starts speeding up. It comes a little bit more naturally. And once you have an element like this built, you can copy that element and paste it throughout your entire application or whatever you're designing. Um, these, these elements are super resizable, so it's pretty nice. Um, and it gets more efficient the more that you do it. But yeah, dark UI elements are a super fun thing to play with, and I'm pretty stoked on them. Uh, I definitely love dark interfaces because they're kind of easier on the eye. Anytime I'm in Illustrator, I always choose the dark UI. My phone's set up for the dark UI. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of it. I know it's a little bit trendy right now, but I do feel like it's just easier on the eyes and it's pretty aesthetically pleasing. Also, another side note is that I've been drinking this GT's kombucha stuff. This one specifically is the Unity. They just came out with it and it tastes like those... Uh, those firecracker popsicles, the red, white, and blue ones, they're really delicious. I would highly recommend this. Totally unrelated to this video, but putting it in there anyways. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, if it helped you out, it would be awesome if you would leave a like below or a comment if you have any questions about the topic. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel, if you want to see more videos like this, that would be awesome. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.